University of Nebraska-Lincoln released a study this month on how farmers in this state perceive the effects of grazing corn residue. Of the 108 producers in the survey, 42 didn't graze their fields, with 40% of those growers indicating it was because they felt livestock grazing would cause soil compaction. But long-term UNL research proves the practice can actually be mutually beneficial. Nebraska Extension's Tim Shaver presented those findings recently at a seminar on UNL's East Campus. We talked about the results with Tim and started by asking about the background of that research. So first of all, there was a study conducted up in Mead that had been going, at the time uh, when I met with the, uh, the, the investigators, had been going for about 20 years. And they were doing spring grazing and fall grazing on both corn and soybeans. And they wanted to see if there was any effects on soil physical properties and soil chemical properties. Uh, so myself and uh, some fellow colleagues from the USDA here in Lincoln went up there and soil sampled it and did some analysis to see if, in fact, grazing was causing any issues that might affect our agronomic production of both corn and soybeans. And what did the testing show? Well, what we've seen is that even after 20 years, there's very little effect, certainly no real negative effects. Uh, throughout the 20 years of the study, there was no differences in any yields with the corn or the soybeans. In terms of uh, nutrient cycling or the soil chemical properties, we saw no differences whatsoever across anything. So everything looked good there. Uh, in terms of the soil physical properties, we did see a trend for soil aggregation, which is when the soil kind of forms little particles that allows for pore space in the soil so that water infiltration can occur. We did see a, some decrease in aggregation in the spring grazing, but not to a statistically significant level. So while we are seeing trends, we didn't see any actual real effects of that. The overall results, are they counter to what some farmers might think would be happening? Right, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do this. A lot, a lot of the farmers who are growing the corn and soybeans mm -hmm. just suspect that having the cows out there grazing might cause some, some ill effects, so they just might not want to do it. And we're just not seeing that. We, we think it's... All of our results show that it's a really a beneficial process for farmers to remove, in, especially in the eastern part of the state where we might have too much residue, to remove some of that residue and provide a really good uh, feed source for these cows in a way that does not appear to be affecting our agronomic production in any way. Is there a noticeable difference between grazing and baling? Yeah, so uh, we have another study out in the western part of the state where we actually are doing a very similar. It hasn't been going as long. Uh, it's been going on about uh, eight years now. But uh, after about five years, we went in and did about the same uh, level of sampling. But this study also had a uh, baling component to it. So we were removing a lot more residue. And in that, we are seeing much stronger trends that the baling is causing issues. And we're also measuring soil compaction. And we are seeing that in some cases, the, the heavier equipment of baling, as opposed to having cows out there, can start to cause some concerns with baling. So because of the levels of residue that, were, that are removed with baling, generally, we do not recommend that process. Is there a preference as to how much residue you should remove if compaction isn't an issue? Um, there are some studies that have looked at what is the best way to keep the nutrient cycling going. Um, generally, with the uh, cow, if the cows are on there at a level that we would recommend, then we're not removing anywhere near the a quantity that would be too much or would start to cause problems. So if the grazing is managed uh, carefully, then we're not seeing any problems with that. I think you hinted at this, but where do you want to go from here with this research? Right, so uh, a big deal is that uh, we talked about how that aggregation is, is starting to show a, a trend of decreasing. So what we really need to do is just continue looking at it. And that can be difficult because long-term studies are hard to initiate and they're hard to keep going, uh, especially if a funding cycle determines that this just isn't something that's of, of importance anymore. You can lose some of these sites. So it, it's really difficult to keep these long-term studies going, but that's what we really need to do. You know, in some of these cases, these processes take decades. And we really need to be able to just monitor them over long periods of time to see if there is a point where we do start to cause some problems.